So how often can you predict when someone will wreck their car? So how the hell are you supposed to effectively market or advertise an, to an audience that is as vast as an ocean? Is there any way to narrow this down? Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast with your host, Rick Sellover, where minor adjustments produce major improvements in mindset, personal growth, and success. This is the place to be every Monday, where we make small improvements and take positive actions in our business and personal lives that will make a major impact in our success, next level growth, and quality of life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Mind Wrench Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Silover. Glad you could join me again today. So how often can you predict when someone will wreck their car? Think about it for a minute. Well, let's see. Other than the millisecond before you hit someone that ran a red light or cut into your lane or stop too quickly for you, or you brake check that moron that's right on your ass. I mean, he's so close you can't even see his front bumper while you're on the expressway. Now, that would cause a small pileup, right? And that's not a very responsible thing to do, but sure would be satisfying, right? Anyways, that's a bad idea. Don't do it. What about the intersection closest to your shop? It ices over, um, a quick freezing rain, or a snow squall at rush hour. Surely that would yield some collision work, right? But no guarantee. Data from 2018 NHTSA report shows an average of approximately 17,250 car crashes per day every single day in the United States. That's about 6.3 million a year. But the problem is you have no idea when and where and to who those accidents will happen, right? As all of you know, collision repair is what we would call a on-demand type of purchase. Much like a tree falling on your roof needing emergency repairs or the plumbing springing a leak requiring some instant work from uh, both a plumber and a drywaller, right? Or the furnace dying or an emergency dental surgery you didn't plan for, like an impulse purchase, which is one of those purchases you just make pretty much on everything else you buy, right? That you can plan out, price out, provide the right supplier. So how the hell are you supposed to effectively market or advertise to an audience that is as vast as an ocean? Is there any way to narrow this down? Fuzzy target is hard to hit. Well, from what I've seen, approximately 40% of collision shops actively do some sort of advertising or marketing. And that leaves about 60% of the shops that really don't do anything. Or maybe they tried one or two things earlier on, had little to no success, and gave up. So what are my options for casting a wide net on this fuzzy target? Well, the older generations, uh, baby boomers as we call them, that's my generation, uh, have tried one or more of the following methods with varying amounts of success. And those are things like local newspaper or a Shoppers Network weekly paper you'll find in your mail uh, pretty much every week, local church newsletters, uh, coupon books, direct mailers, or maybe some of them have tried restaurant placemats. Those are disgusting. Have you ever seen those? (laughs) I don't think anybody ever buys anything from a restaurant placemat. Yet I've seen them for for years and years. Uh, Yellow Pages book uh, ads, or Yellow Pages ads which is a complete waste of dollars, Uh, billboards or signs, TV or radio spots, a purple elephant. Anybody know what a purple elephant is? Well, I learned in a marketing class what a purple elephant is, and I'll explain it. Quite simply, it's something that makes your shop stand out like you had a purple elephant on the roof of your shop. Okay, No matter what you're doing, you're going to see a purple elephant. Well, you don't really have to physically have a purple elephant on your shop to get that effect. Although I will say, in Metro Detroit, I have seen one shop that does have a pink elephant right in the front of the shop. But a purple elephant is something that stands out. Like uh, I've seen shops that put a wrecked car out in the front yard, okay, that draws attention. Or something that just really stands out 
that people see instantly. It may or may not have anything to do with a collision shop, but it's something that draws their attention, which will make them look at your shop or notice your shop. Uh, What about um, sponsoring local sports teams? Or the old sure-fired way of getting business, um, dropping off a box of donuts or bagels at an insurance agency's office. That's everybody's go-to, but it's never effective. And then there's the one form of marketing that every shop has the potential to enjoy, and that's word of mouth, which is still to this day considered very good advertising and should always be a part of a larger marketing plan for your business as every happy, satisfied customer that you have can affect 4.1 people around them. And those are all potential new customers. So what is your ROI, return on investment, or capture rate? Are you even tracking these things? If not, why not? I mean, you did spend money, your hard-earned money, on these things, right? How are you supposed to know what works and what is not effective without tracking? You have to measure to improve any marketing efforts. So the question is, if these methods are mostly outdated and ineffective, is there a better way to advertise? Bet your ass there is. Can I spend less and reach more people? Apps are frickin' lootly. When it comes to massive reach potential and minimal spend, social media platforms leave traditional forms of advertising and marketing in the dust. That's right, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, and more. All these platforms that you hate because either your kids can't look at you at the dinner table because they're flipping through stupid cat videos, or your spouse is on the couch staring at their phone, scrolling through endless comments from some dumb political post or something else, or your technicians are laughing at uh, some dumbass video of some idiots hurting themselves on some crazy social media challenge, right? Well, these platforms that can bring out the worst in humanity and drain us of endless hours of our lives are also the most powerful forms of sales and marketing on the planet. And here's a quick rundown of the top platforms in the social media space. Number one, Facebook, launched in 2004 with now over 2.6 billion users the most widely used business advertising mode available right now. They have their own Facebook ads, which is probably probably the most effective way for a minimal amount of money to advertise to a wide audience. Number two, YouTube, launched in 2005 with just over 2 billion users. Advertising on YouTube is growing at an incredible rate, and it's not just for cat videos anymore. There is people putting, you know, 30-second to two-minute clips of collision repairs on there, before and after videos, small little, you know, know know-how and how-to videos that relate to their collision shops. The variety is just unbelievable. The possibilities are just endless. There's LinkedIn, launched in 2002, but really didn't uh, start doing business uh, or producing any marketing till 2006. But there's over 300 million users of that. It's like the business version of Facebook. Twitter, launched in 2006, 321 million users. Snapchat, some of us older folks don't even know what the hell is Snapchat. Snapchat, ask your kids, ask your 30-year-olds, they know what it is. Launched in 2011 with 314 million users and growing rapidly. Instagram, launched 2013. That is owned by Facebook as well, 112 million users. But the business use of Instagram is growing, uh, just compounding at a fantastic rate. These are all powerful forms of advertising on a massive scale when used correctly. So what do we do? Okay, Rick, I get it. This seems like it could be a little more effective than old school ad methods. But, hey, I'm just too old or I'm too busy or I'm not tech savvy or I just don't want to invest the time to learn how to do this stuff. I barely know how to get onto one of those platforms, let alone use it for my shop or use it to advertise. What the hell do I do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Three words. Cut a check. What do I mean, cut a check? I mean, cut a check. I mean, find someone that already knows how to do this and pay them. Cut a check to get there faster. You probably won't have the time or desire to learn this, but others will and already have, and you can pay them for them to do it for you. 
If you already have a family member or a relative or a friend's kid, you know, 16 years old to maybe 30, hire them. Contract them out for the work. Pay them. This stuff comes so easy for that generation. It could easily be the best investment you make in your shop is to pay for experience, pay for knowledge, pay to move the needle faster. And you can contact me for additional resources on this. But something easy that you could have someone in your organization do is to start a Facebook page for your shop. This is probably the most basic, most simple things any shop and probably every shop should do is have a Facebook page. You can post specials, run contests, post reviews, do giveaway contests, offer logo uh, type merchandise, whatever you want to do to interest your community. And then most importantly is engage with your community on your page. Connect with other pages or other groups in your neighborhood or community, like the Chamber of Commerce or the local police or fire departments, or radio stations, uh, youth sports clubs uh, or leagues. Join auto and, and collision repair Facebook groups. There's, there's plenty of them out there. There's a million ways to connect through social media, and all of it can help raise awareness of and drive business to your shop. A fender bender survey last year showed that only 18% of shops do daily promotional or business-related posts on social media. And another 43% make monthly posts. So here's a little tip. Shops that made at least weekly business-related posts, regardless of the platform, increased their sales by at least 7% year over year, with some as high as 36% increase. And then you want to know the cost to do that? Zero. A big, fat nothing. Unless they're paying an employee or an outside resource to do it for them, that kind of advertising costs zero. What did you pay for your last direct mail flyer or that last coupon book? Or God forbid you still paid for a Yellow Pages ad a couple years ago. I mean, even a little dinky quarter page ad was, what, you know, over $1,500 a month? That's crazy. This is zero. No investment. All it takes is a little bit of skill and a little bit of time. And if you don't have the time because you're busy making money, getting stuff done in your shop, running things, that's fine. Listen, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to learn all this stuff. I get it. But find somebody that does and pay them to do it. It would be the best money you spent when it comes to advertising. Lastly, you probably need to go to Google search, and type in your shop's name, and do a little maintenance. Because what you see for your search results you may not be happy with it, and you may have not looked at what your shop looks like or, or how it comes up in Google search. So make the necessary, you can make the necessary edits you need to edit the shop information. Make sure it's up to date and correct. If you need to upload a better, better photo uh, of your shop, then do that. If it looks like shit in the ad, get a better shot of it. You know, Have somebody do that for you. Delete or address any negative reviews. Sometimes a negative review will sit out there for years without being addressed or without being deleted, and it just drags your rating down. Google ratings are very important um, when people are searching for a business. So keep this in mind. You need about a 4.8 rating to stay relevant with a, a Google search, and that's to stay probably on the first page. Uh, and there's about a 94% click-through rate of what comes up on the first page when you do a Google search. 94%. That means only 6% will actually go past page 1. So keep that in mind. You want to be on page 1. Go to Google, type in how to optimize my search results, and there's a ton of information there that you can find. Uh, and there's little tweaks and things you can do to give yourself, you know, put yourself in a better position so it's rated better. But remember, you need a 4.8 or better to be relevant. So do whatever you have to do to get there. And it's, it's not that difficult. Most people haven't looked at their what their you know search looks like in, in a year or two years. I mean, a lot of things change. Uh, you may have reviews on there, and, and you may have only a couple reviews. They look at the number of reviews. So if you don't have many reviews, that means you're not asking your customers to put a review on there, or you haven't pissed off somebody enough to put a review on there, right? Because usually that's the only reason you'll get a review is either you've asked for that input and you've done a great job, and they go ahead and oblige you, okay, because they appreciate it. Or you've done something, or, or they think that you've screwed them over or done something wrong or made them mad or, you know, didn't do what you're supposed to do or overcharged them, in their opinion, 
right? And they'll write a nasty review. Some people just like that. They love to write nasty reviews. Well, address those things. You know, send a reply back to the person that complained. Offer to address the situation. And usually those things go a long way. So keep in mind, there's a lot of critics out there. And a lot of people write, love to write bad reviews because uh, that makes them feel better. But you can overpower that with a lot of good reviews. And if you're doing good quality work, which I'm sure if you're listening to the show, you probably are. Ask your customers, hey, this is really important. This would really help me. If you have to spiff them with a, you know, a free coffee or, or a gift card, or I don't care how you do it, but get it done and get your customers to write good reviews for you on Google. It'll do more good for you than you can imagine. And all you got to do is ask and then monitor it. Go back in and check every month. And when you're looking at those reviews, look at it from the filter of, okay, I wrecked my car. I need to take it to a shop and I do a Google search and your body shop comes up and you click on it. You got to look at it through a customer's eyes and go, would I feel compelled to go to the shop? Does it look inviting or is, is there good reviews? Is it got a good rating? Is there positive comments on there? Or is it missing information? Is it got three reviews? You know, and the oldest ones, you know, five years old. Look at that stuff because that's what your customers or your potential customers are going to look at. You know, most people that you're serving now is not the baby boomer generation. It is millennials, okay? They are the largest section of the workforce right now. And most of those people, you know, they're either going to contact their insurance company first and then we get into the whole steering thing. But there's going to be a lot of them that'll just, they'll go into their phone immediately and they'll search for collision shops or body shops. So there's your opportunity to make sure your shop gets on that first page of the Google search, has a good look to it, has good ratings. you got a better chance of them checking with you before checking with somebody else uh, down the street that did a better job with that. Okay, So that's important. Keep that in mind. I'm not telling you you have to. I'm suggesting it's time well spent. That's free advertising. That's free marketing. You don't pay anything to have your uh, shop on Google. All you got to do is maintain it, update it, make sure it, it looks right, and it's it's reflecting uh, your shop correctly. Well, that's all I got for you today. Um, hopefully this information helps you. I mean, that's my whole goal of being here every week is to provide information that's going to help you become more successful and uh, grow your business and uh, get to that next level that you want to get to. So Hopefully these ideas and what I've shared with you today uh, makes a difference. Do me a favor and email me at ricksillover51 at gmail.com. I'm putting together a nice resource list I'd love to share with you. So contact me, and I'd gladly send it your way. Anyways, that's all I got. So um, hope you have a great week. Take care, and I'll see you next week. If you like this episode, please rate it and hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. If you have any questions or comments, you can always reach me on Instagram at rick underscore Silover, Facebook or Facebook Messenger, or LinkedIn. And please make sure to check out my Facebook page or join my Facebook group, Collision Mastermind. And last but not least, if you see value in this podcast, please share it with others so I can help serve as many people in our industry as possible. And remember, you don't have to be better than anybody else. Just be a better version of you than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm.